आर्टिकल डिलीटेड बहुत दे लिंक्स सो ये देखिए मेरी एफिशिएंसी ठीक है ठीक है नो प्रॉब्लम बट थैंक्स फॉर Okay, can you hear me? Yes, finally. Fine. So it's being yes, streamed on YouTube, and we will look at that uh, in a bit. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just get the conversation going. <laughs> I think we had lots of action on a Saturday morning, <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> okay. Yes. It it means that you are in big league. So. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, thank you. So uh, great to have both of you here, uh, Rajasi and Dr. Minakshi. Uh, we go a long way back, so it's always great to share the platform uh, uh, with both of you. Uh, you know, today's session is on better sanitary waste management, and I think both of your uh, background sort of really, really um, uh, is a great fit. Uh, just to introduce uh, both of you. Uh, to the audience who's hopefully watching on YouTube, fingers crossed. Uh, uh, Dr. Minakshi is a well-known gynecologist in Bangalore. Uh, her specialty is uh, infertility treatment. Um, of course, she is also that compassionate gynecologist who uh, all of us uh, have had the good fortune of being around. Um, she is, uh, amongst many things, mentor, guide, uh, waste management champion, activist, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, has been very clear in getting uh, reusables in the menstrual hygiene management space. Um, and I think, uh, Doc, now I, I believe it's almost uh, over two decades of hard work in this space. Uh, and the journey has been very, very great. So welcome. Uh, thank you for giving us some of your time. Uh, Rajasi uh, is another passionate uh, crusader. Uh, while her core is uh, child education and early child care, 
uh, I think a lot of her um, ethos is are also around reusables and a great take that she's been working with multiple uh, genders uh, when it comes to menstruation. And um, I think, you know, in the last decade, there's been so much of conversation around sanitary waste, on menstrual hygiene, on um, getting the whole, uh, uh, you know, conversation going right from, from the change in disposables to reusables. Um, and of course, uh, managing reusables better because that's always been a deeper conversation that all of us have had when we're doing training sessions. Um, so that's sort of like the background um, on why we're having this uh, uh, this session. And we thought that we keep it very fluid, you know, very uh, open. We want to have more conversation. Uh, so, you know, we sort of said no to presentations. Uh, and uh, we said that let's let's sort of just discuss because there's so many other things that we don't sort of take into consideration uh, when it comes to uh, sanitary waste management as a stream in itself. Um, so I'll just put the first question out there. Uh, and, you know, uh, we'll, we'll do a simple flow. Dr. Minakshi goes first and then Radhisi, you go next. Um, uh, feel free to, you know, sort of jump in, have their open conversation. Uh, but the first question is going to be on, you know, sanitary waste is a huge problem. I mean, globally, it's not just something that affects Pune, Bangalore, uh, Bombay, you know, any of the metro cities. It's it's emerging to be a problem everywhere. Even even a simple gram panchayat or even a village is now facing this problem. Um, any thoughts on why we need sort of like a transition, either in terms of a better plan or in terms of you know a shift to reusables? And you know some some thoughts on that. So for me, the reason to go into reusables is the comfort for the woman, better health for the woman, and then comes in the economics, and then comes in uh, not having waste. So it's very important that we do uh, keep the health factor most important because the plastics and the other chemicals that are there in the disposable sanitary napkin is just not worth using it. So um, unfortunately for me, I'm not young like you girls, but uh, I did use it for half a day and it was wonderful. And if I at 55 could have used it for half a day and thought that I wish I was younger, all of you who are young <laughs> and menstruating should be using this because it's such a brilliant, um, you know, innovation. It's such a brilliant invention. Why must you use something that is not good? Have we not all turned to smartphones? Have we not turned to silicon uh, footwear, have we not altered? The country has changed to using gas uh, for cooking. And of course, everybody, I mean, I think there's not a person in India who doesn't use a mobile phone. If not a smartphone, at least a simple mobile phone, everybody. So I'm looking forward to this menstrual cup being like a mobile phone. Everybody will use it and everybody will love it. I mean, all the women will love it. And of course, the men will love it because they don't have to spend money. Rajasthi, your thoughts? Yeah, so I think um, a doctor has put it really well that, you know, the parameters when it comes to buying any product. I mean, um, uh, there is this one thing that I get heard often that, you know, cups or cloth pads are very expensive and, you know, they are not affordable. I'm sure we are going to discuss it later. But then, um, I mean, the comfort that we get is unparalleled. And uh, even like today, uh, tomorrow, it's going to be a World Menstrual Hygiene Day. And I'm getting these messages from so many people, so many. And I'm so happy to see inboxes buzzing continuously saying that, you know, we don't want to go back to disposable. Thank you for introducing us to reusables. And uh, I'm telling you this, this is not one or two messages that I, I'm sure we all as educators get such messages. And these are not one or two people who are talking about it. There are so many people and the data is not recorded. Unfortunate of that. But then I feel that there are so many people using it. And, um, and you know, waste is such a thing. I feel that uh, 
um i mean we do feel guilty of creating waste but also i feel that uh, um we should also think of uh, um i mean not alternatives but also like uh, responsible behaviors when it comes to uh, when it comes to our uh, menstrual products so so yes i'm sure we will be discussing more about it but uh, uh, but i'm i'm glad that uh, this conversation is happening and it's very and three of us know each other for a long time so i'm i'm looking forward to the conversation yeah that is the best point right often when we talk about uh, menstruation it's it's like this first understanding is that it's just women who menstruate uh and i would really urge you to share a little bit from your experience you know because a transition has to be inclusive it can't just sort of say no let women first have it or you know it has to sort of go uh, holistically uh, so some thoughts on that yeah so there are so many i will say people uh so there is this term called menstruators or people who bleed people who menstruate so a lot of people a lot of uh, educators or practitioners are using this term because we want to include um, uh, different menstruators so there are people who may not identify as a woman yet yet have uterus and they may continue to bleed so um, i mean i have come across so many such people uh, some of them are close friends of mine and uh, we need to include them in this conversation we need to also educate them so uh, about the reusable alternatives and i uh, this one feedback that i've heard from one of my non binary friend uh, person who identifies as um, uh, non binary so he said that uh, he really likes tampons or cups so they are very discreet so if he is using a men's toilet also he doesn't have to you know there's no voice that has been made of you, you know changing it changing any product so that's one thing and uh, he uh, he doesn't have to carry anything in the bag because the cup is going to be inside he just have to remove it empty it and then he can use it again uh, he also likes period panties so um, i mean these are something which are uh, which uh, so he was uh, apprehensive about in the beginning but then he wanted to give it a try because he uses men's washroom a lot so i think this is something which uh, you know we these people are missing out of conversation i feel and and these people can also be included i mean this should be included and uh, i mean they can also benefit from this reusable products i feel right thanks so much for sharing that uh, and uh, anybody no, i will i will pause you there i i will pause you there because uh, we have to we, i know what's coming up next uh, just hold on so when we talking about a transition right like you very rightly said radhasi it's also about uh, you know the discretion and like doc also said like it's about how much how period is nobody else's business except yours and you know doc shares this line very well uh, that nobody needs to know that you're on your periods uh it it has to be a private affair uh but even today if you were to take an example of a commercial sanitary pad like a disposable one um the mm. infrastructure in most uh, washrooms is not enough uh and it, i mean an example is say you go to a mall uh you know uh and it's a crowded saturday evening at the mall and you see that the dustbin the sanitary pad bin for is already very filled up very quickly done you know the transition has to sort of map all of these dynamics um and uh, say if you're for example if you're a, a cloth pad user or if you're a menstrual cup user what's the first obvious thing that comes to your mind uh, in terms of the infrastructure that needs to be there in in that space uh, so some thoughts on that other than other than requiring a toilet which has a little bit of water um i don't think there is any other infrastructure that is required the cloth pad users will always carry an extra pad a cloth pad which they will change and the used pad will be put back into the little packet that they were having with the new pad that's it so you are not going to throw anything you don't require anything and if there is no water there is still no problem all you have to do is the cup which has collected blood drop the blood it's your own blood put it back into the vagina without having any inhibitions 
it requires a little bit of change of habit. There's nothing yucky about it. And really, we don't require any other infrastructure if you're doing reusables. So all the rest of the you know, thing changes. So to me, um, I spoke to one of my uh, college juniors. Juniors means 40 years junior to me, a young MBBS graduate and got to know from her that they are so happy using the menstrual cup. She must be 22 years old. And she heard me some four years ago. And uh, now the bathrooms don't stink anymore. The bathrooms don't have any smell. So this is something that men also have a problem with. So when I was using disposable sanitary napkins, despite everything that I did, the bathroom was still stinky. And I had to throw it out. So three people know or four people know that I'm having my periods. One is the pharmacy chap knows when I buy the pads. Two, my husband knows that I'm having my periods because my bathroom is stinking. I'm carrying the pad out and throwing it out. Um, whoever I meet on the way knows that I'm having my periods. And four, the person who picks it up also knows I'm having my periods. With this, with the cup, Nobody needs to know. Of course, I don't believe in hiding the fact that I'm having my periods because having my periods means that I am in good health. So that's important for me too. That is um, um, yeah, I think doctor has already put it really well. Uh, a small addition that I would like to make is if, if a person is using a cloth pad, so I think probably a small platform or something, a cloth pad or a cup, whatever, you know, any product that they want to change probably. So I think a small platform could be of help where they can keep it, you know, while changing or so uh, I think that, that is something that is needed. Otherwise, um, and, and there's this misconception that people have that, uh, you have to immediately wash your uh, cloth pad if you have used it. That's not true. We, do, we don't do that. I've been using it for so many years and we don't do that. You know, it's not like uh, people believe that, you know, you have to wash it and they, then you have to dry it wherever you are using it. But that's not true. You generally carry it back home and it doesn't stink. It does not. I mean, I carry my dabba, I carry everything in the same same big jula, and it doesn't stink. No one will even figure out, you know, it was kept in the same bag. So, I mean, it's just about basic hygiene practices. And uh, yes, that's it. So, no way, no fancy infrastructure is needed. Nothing is needed. And I think um, our uh, it's no harm in uh, keeping stocking these products at important places like malls or or a, um, or a workplace, of course, but but with that education is important. So parallelly, we will be doing a lot of things, but um, I mean, with disposables, these should also get visibility is what I feel. Could be in form of posters or anything. Sure, and I think uh, for places like say a residential society, right, where typically sanitary waste with, with the precursor of it being already a taboo, just sort of finds itself in ducts or like flushed into toilets or, you know, and, and yeah, that's a big yeah, problem yeah. for facilities management. Uh, uh, I know uh, Dr. Minashi has gone to so many hostels and, you know, other places where she's, uh, I mean, it's nightmarish to see what it is. Um, so even yeah, yeah. there, I think, I think why people sort of say that we, sh we want them to use reusables and, you know, we want them to make that informed choice uh, if they choose to use disposables, what are the three things that they sort of need to do? Uh, you know, obviously not flushing down the toilet or the duct, uh, but you know, what is it that uh, they can still do to manage that better? I think a very, uh, a very simple thing, any, you know, again, this is very basic uh, sense. I feel that uh, uh, having a separate bin for the same, just a very simple thing, just have a separate bin and we all follow like whoever uses it follows a very basic rule that they will not dump anything else in that. And only the, you know, the menstrual products are put in that. That's it. And they are segregated separately. And then they are handed over to, you know, whatever facility who is being going to take care of either incinerate it or 
or whether wherever it's going later so i think a very simple thing is that uh, that one we can do of course i'm not in favor of incineration because incinerators are something that are uh, you know in india they are not some we are not even close to what the environment uh, environment uh, department suggest yeah yeah so so i mean they are just burners they are not even incinerators um but uh, i think doctor has something to say uh, you so can go ahead one 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 uh, important thing that you said was every bathroom must have a little stand where you can keep your pad uh, or whatever it is like we want to keep our purse we need a hook in every bathroom yeah right? yeah the same way we need something where we can keep some stuff that's important two a request to everybody who is using disposables don't throw your pad open please have some respect for the person who is going to come and empty the dustbin and you know then transfer it to the next point of um, management you need to have a newspaper with you and you need to wrap that thing wrap it in plain simple newspaper you don't need to uh, you know any fancy stuff and definitely not plastic because it's breathable it will stink is when the when the blood comes down from the uterus into the vagina the vagina has lots of bacteria that is there and that comes along with the blood and lands up on this so there is blood there is bacteria and there is this beautiful media here that is there which is forming a petri dish and the bacteria and the blood feed each other up nicely and the bacteria then produces a lot of gases which are stinky which is why the pad stinks why does the cup not stink is because the bacteria is outside the cup is sitting and is forming a beautiful seal with the vagina and the blood just comes through into the cup so the bacteria is outside and the blood in the cup does not stink a very important reason for you to use the cup so that the blood is not contaminated with the bacteria of the vagina wonderful great to know uh, you know kind of great to know that uh, i think the science behind why a disposable pad stinks and the other doesn't um i'm sure why you sort of supported people in that transition right and, and i've also done it uh, but i i'd like to hear a couple of stories from both of you uh is that when somebody shifts from a disposable pad to a reusable reusable sanitary product right uh, so cups pads what sort of like the first thing that shifts for them and you know it could be it could be hilarious stories uh, you know some some anecdotes that uh, that i'm sure you uh, both have enough and more of so uh, including stuff like oh that thing got stuck there to <laughs> Uh, oh i don't know what to do you know things like that so so you know would be great to hear some uh, interesting story let's just go ahead okay so i often get calls from washrooms and uh, they are hilarious when we look back to it that time that person is panicking that person is thinking you know i need to see a doctor because the cup is not coming out and it's lost and then once this person said to me that the cup is going to land into the stomach now she has to get a surgery and i told her do the you know it's not like that it's not going to go there so i'm just going to show this uh, model so i had to actually do a video call and tell her that you know cup is not going to go beyond here this is you know this is a stop for there so it's not going to enter in here and then go and somewhere get lost so i mean basic anatomy is something that we are not aware of even if we work at it companies and different places i won't blame them i will blame education system and society for that but uh, that are some hilarious things but also there are uh, there are uh, there was this uh, uh, this 
this friend who actually had to take help of uh, husband to get it removed and then uh, he like they both were on a call and they were like what to do next what to do next and those hushing voices were there the family was outside they were not knowing what is going on inside it was a messy hilarious situation and uh, but after all they were they managed to do it and then i told that uh, that this friend of mine that you know uh, there's nothing to worry and uh, you know you just uh, try it in the uh, you know when you are in the shower or something so that you don't have to worry so much because your body is relaxed and you're not tensed so i think like this anxiety was is also there a lot of times that you have to try it you want to make sure that you know it happens pro- properly everything happens properly you are trying to do that but then uh, in that thing your muscles i think kind of you know they become tense and then they do not cooperate so yeah so that's why such stories happen i feel i will share more i will let a doctor share so there were we we had uh, given instructions to police women to use it and one police woman uh, called me up at 9:30 in the night saying uh, you know i put the cup in the morning and i'm not able to remove it at all so i said you come come home and i will help you remove it it's it's not something that i can explain i can of course tell you to have a bath i can tell you to you know bear down like you are constipated um and then you you will find the base of the cup and then you pinch the base of the cup if there is a stem then you go above the stem and you pinch that portion don't pull on the stem this you go above the stem is only for it to be found so wow well, i told her that but still she couldn't manage so i said all right come back tomorrow no great harm will be done to you just take it easy have a good sleep and come in the morning to my clinic and i will help you to remove it but morning came and by then she had relaxed enough and the cup had come down so she was able to reach the bottom and then pull it out without any problem so it is just the initial fear that every woman has the to do this so i was uh, talk, talking to uh, people as to uh, you know when do you go to see the doctor you don't go to see the doctor before you have the first intercourse you go to see the doctor after you have got pregnant when it comes to the cup you go to see the doctor before you use the cup and then there are so many doctors who are not aware of this because there's no advertisement where is the money for advertisement a cup costs you maybe 500 rupees or 1000 rupees last 10 years and which means 100 rupees or 50 rupees a year and that means between you know 8 rupees and 10 rupees per month where is the advertisement money unlike the advertisement money of the good cup any number of uh, you know all the celebrities are there and now because of the ipl all the um, cricket celebrities are also saying kamla pasand it it really makes me wild that we are not thinking of the health of the people money seems to be more important but here since there is no money there is no advertisement no i think it's uh, it's another important thing right like it has uh, saved a lot of people a lot of money in, in the last 10 years i would say that uh, from my own personal uh experience and now been using reusables for over 12 years and i would say that that's probably 2500 into 12 saved right there as a basic minimum including including you know postpartum bleeding including all of that um so any any stories you know around financial savings uh, i know uh, doc you speak to a lot of uh, asha workers as well so you also have a lot of stories from uh, you know rural india and the landscape is changing quite quite a bit i would say that 10 years ago nobody was speaking about menstrual cups uh and uh, cloth pads uh, but today it's like you know it's getting so much of popularity so uh, so some stories on how people have saved money you know that's that's always a good story to say even though there's no money for branding uh, good stories on saving money is a nice thing to hear go ahead rajesh
ओके सो सो आई रिमेम्बर दिस वन सेशन वेर देर वॉज दिस वुमेन फ्रॉ हू हैड कम फ्रॉम शी वॉज लिविंग इन स्लम्स ऑफ मुंबई एंड हा इट वॉज अ वर्ल्ड मेन्स्ट्रल हाइजीन डे आई रिमेम्बर दिस वॉज आई थिंक इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन एंड वी वेर डूइंग अ सेशन सो इन दैट सेशन दिस वुमेन हैड कम हू who has three daughters and a son and they are like five six members in the family and then i was talking about reusables to her and then she was quite fascinated with the idea of menstrual cup and uh, she asked me if her daughters can use it too and i said it's it's quite safe to use there's no nothing to worry i can guide you how to use it and those daughters were also like some 14 15 year olds and uh, they were not like those really naive girls they were some uh, you know so uh, so i told them about it and uh, she liked it so much and i and later on i came to know she uh, purchased uh, some cups and she also purchased some cloth pads Uh, because some of her daughters were okay, some of her daughters were not okay trying the cups. So uh, she went on to try it, and she continues to use them. And um, I mean, I'm not in touch with her anymore. Uh, but uh, the friend who had organized it, she, um, I mean, she she was in touch with her until fear until I think last year. So um, so I mean, there are people who have told me that you know. that uh, you know affordability is very relative like uh, this and this and this has come from a rural person only it's not like uh, an urban person told me that you know something is affordable or not affordable this this person told me that you know it's an all in the, all in our mind what is affordable and what is not affordable i may purchase a 1000 rupees sari without any hesitation because i think that it's worth investing in it but i if if i am not convinced in buying uh, you know a new reusable product i will keep questioning and then this affordability is something that may come to you know that may be one of my questions but actually that's not the major question the major concern is uh, if you are convinced if you feel that you know it's worth enough in investing because i have seen women hiding money saving money somewhere and then buying a cup so it's i mean that is something that has happened and it continues to happen so i mean it's not about affordability i feel it's not about that it's about the fear in the mind going away so i was talking to a group of school children where the boys and the girls were there and of course the girls didn't ask any questions and the boys didn't ask any questions but after the session was over this youngster a uh, gentleman came and asked me you mean to say ma'am my mother is going to get periods all her life he was really aghast that she would get periods all her life so i said no it stops around 50 don't worry about it so i was really uh, taken aback that this youngster was concerned about his mother enough to you know think that will she have this period throughout into her old age so that is something that you know as you speak the boys begin to understand what it means what is period why does it happen and we always tell everybody women that if you want to look beautiful you need to have your periods too and stop being shy about it the same hormones that give you beauty give you your periods too so you need to understand that so one you want and one you don't want doesn't work you need you get it as a package deal yeah i think that's so beautifully put right uh, so uh, so thanks for sharing uh, stories on that uh, i i'd like to share uh, one story because when when i showed the menstrual cup to somebody for the first time uh, they were like 12 ml hi hai <laughs> you know i'm sure i bleed more than that you know i'm sure i'm bleeding a brahmaputra inside it <laughs> definitely not bara ml right so i think uh, i think even you know the there's so much happening inside that we don't acknowledge uh, that we sort of fail to realize that it's this much that's coming out and it just needs to be frequently uh, you know emptied out if you're bleeding a little more than uh, 12 ml 
and just to even ask somebody how much do you think you bleed in a menstrual cycle i don't think the basic answer is very well known uh, to people right no no pe- so people are you- not even aware yeah so it's like uh, you know of course you with your gynecology background uh, would know would know and like, start statistics on that but uh, everybody yeah. thinks like they probably bleed half a half a liter like a day because um, there's so much social psychosomatic things that's built around it that uh, you feel like itna hai so that means i will need 10 pads and and 10 pads so 10 into 4 so 40 pads so 40 pads leke aayenge 40 pads bahar dalenge and then 40 pads somebody else has to manage so imagine in a 200 uh, flat building you know the the problem just amplifies on another level correct so the yeah. other thing that uh, women suffer is uh, is a feeling of inadequacy do i have enough pads to see me through my periods when you do reusables you don't have that fear in your mind at all you are very comfortable and you know you will just have to wash it wash the cup or wash the cloth pad and it's available for you the next morning so you don't have this fear of inadequacy and the fact that you have to go and ask somebody yeah. else for the money please can i have the money to buy pads and then of course the wonderful gentleman will turn around and say humne pichle mahina paisa diya tha na tum phir se kyun pooch rahe ho पीरियड तो पिछले महीना अगले महीना आज ये महीना में आएगा मेन डोंट अंडरस्टैंड इट सो यू नो इट्स इट्स सपोज टू बी ह्यूज साइकोलॉजिकल फैक्टर फॉर वीमेन टू गो थ्रू दिस वंडरिंग डू आई हैव इनफ पैड्स एंड देन ऑफ कोर्स वीमेन विल वेयर द सेम पैड फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड देयरफॉर गेट यू नो इंफेक्शन यूरिनरी ट्रैक्ट इंफेक्शन and reproductive tract infection uh, infection to the uterus infection to the bladder so uh, all this can be completely dealt away when you use reusables absolutely yeah, i was so, just going to add that yeah. yeah yeah so so very quickly doc from you uh, would be great to know how many say uh, say somebody wanted to switch from disposable pads to cloth pads how many cloth pads would they have to buy i know it's I just think- one cup I know it's just one cup, but for cloth pads, you know what is what is the optimal number? Five cloth number? pads. You use That's three, it. and you have two spare. And when you come back for at the end of the day, you wash the two so that you again have four. You're using one for the night. You don't need any more. You don't need any more. Than that. So it's self sufficiency through and through. Rajesh yeah. should be able to tell better because she is a great proponent of the cloth pad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i think 5 to 6 uh, pads are more than enough and uh, just to add to that i mean there are many designs that come in cloth pads also so here is one design where it's a, it looks like a pad it has a shape of a pad and um, so this is one design and then there is another uh, there are two more designs i'm just showing one of them so this one is a jacket and it has a insert which you can remove and it's it's you know it's just uh two pieces Single of cloth loose. yeah yeah so this is just a cloth and you can use a towel or any soft material so i mean um uh this dries quicker compared to this one so but then i mean if you have enough you will be you won't fall short of it you just have to you know plan it properly that's it so like if you have sufficient to like 5 to 6 in the at least so uh, i mean if you have 5 to 6 in the home there is nothing to worry because i uh, i work outside i use cloth pads and i'm yet like i have too many that's a different story because i'm too greedy to try different cloth pads but uh, but uh, i mean 5 to 6 are something that one needs that's it So, like how frequently enough. do we need to replace them? How frequently do we need to replace them? As often as you replace your pants. Uh, so it, oh, I. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think a very tear. simple. Uh, in. Yes. Yes. It has to tear. That is one, and uh, I think a, a little bit also depends on person to person. Like in my own family, if I have to give example, um, what ex some women in my family she. 
uh, bleeds a lot compared to me and uh, her pads uh, you know they become um, uh, like because she bleeds a lot probably compared what to now? me so her pads are uh, they become um, dry and what i can say a bit r- rough yeah. on skin okay yeah. uh so i i on on other hand i do not experience that so mine last longer to compare to hers so, so you know what I you should use... do like yeah. the panty the panty if you do not uh if you wash it and then hang it and dry it the center portion of the panty that is in contact with your uh, vaginal opening uh becomes stiff so right. you right. you need to do this अगर आप इसको ऐसे करोगे तो आपके रिश्तेदार को बोलो कि ब्रेक द द कोलैजन दैट हैज कम इन एंड मेड द कपड़ा स्टिफ द अदर थिंग द अदर थिंग इज द वेजाइना हैज एन एसिडिक डिस्चार्ज सो यू पुट एसिड दिस इज माइल्ड एसिड बट यू पुट माइल्ड एसिड ऑन अ क्लॉथ द क्लॉथ विल स्लोली वेयर आउट फास्टर देन द अदर पार्ट so that is something that people need to understand and um that panty is is very typical it and uh, these pads when uh, my daughter was wearing it uh, it used to get really stiff so then one, one of those days i uh, you know thought about what was happening and i gave it a good rub and that stiffness goes away right right okay so now hamsa yeah. you must you must be saying why is meenakshi wearing such a big bindi no 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 i know why you are wearing but i want you to share why you are wearing <laughs> <laughs> so rajasi um way back in 2015 when we started working on this uh, smita kulkarni yes. came up with this big bindi uh, it's a red bindi and i don't know whether you can see the green dot in the middle so it is green the red green your yes, period yes. the red must go away and this must be green one day yes i Raja, i uh, uh, my bindis got finished i should uh, stock more now <laughs> okay <laughs> you reminded me <laughs> yeah, no it, so... you know because it hits you when some when you see because mu to dekhte hai na baki sab nahi dekhte i am wearing a green and a red gear but nobody is seeing it so bindi dikhta hai yeah so so the other piece is right so it's very, it's a nice way to show support it's a nice way to sort of you know spread uh, awareness in every day and i think supportive partners also play a great role uh, in sort of creating uh, in creating sort of like the right atmosphere at home from moving from taboo to no taboo to just accepting it right uh, so any stories you've heard of that i know yatin i'm a big fan of yatin rajsi's husband because he's there very nicely explaining women ये वजाइना है यहाँ से ब्लीडिंग होता है आपको इसमें टेंशन नहीं है राइट दैट्स जस्ट लाइक ब्यूटीफुल सपोर्ट ऑन एन अदर लेवल बट डू शेयर सम एक्सपीरियंसेस वेर यू हैड यू नो मे बी समबडी सम बॉयफ्रेंड बाइंग अ वेस्टर कप फॉर हिज गर्लफ्रेंड और यू नो समथिंग लाइक दैट सो वुड बी वेरी नाइस टू हियर दैट इज वेल द सिंपलेस्ट गिफ्ट इज टू गिव एवरी वुमन अ कप यस यस i have had so many so many of uh, friends um who have either gifted cup to their boyfriend uh, or to their girlfriend or the boyfriend has approached me and asked to me which product is best so um, i mean that is a very good gesture that a lot of people are doing and and i'm glad they are becoming part of the conversation uh at the same time i also um my husband also nags me at times when you know i'm being lazy about uh, certain hygienic practices he observes it and then he'll be like nagging me no no you are not doing it right no it this should not be drying here this should go outside this that so i feel that you know it gets normalized after a time it takes some time but then um, i mean um it's worth that we all have this conversations at home normalize it and um, and i feel like just like how we wash any other garment or any other thing in our home i mean washing our uh, you know reusable products should not be a shame or it should not be something that should be you know something a taboo so when my children were young 
um, I had just got into infertility and so they knew everything about egg and sperm. And what was the <laughs> conversation? What did you speak to your mummy yesterday? She told me about egg and sperm. So now I think my grandchildren will turn around and say, my grandmother told me about the menstrual cup and why I must use it. And my grandmother told me that I never used any disposable uh, nappies. Uh, so, you know, it's just a question of making everybody comfortable with that, including my father now knows a little about it at 95. That's so that's so enduring to hear uh, that you know, everybody has their takeaway uh, uh, from this. Again, coming to how infrastructure is today built, uh, and again, how poorly it supports, uh, whether it is a diaper, whether it is a disposable pad. Um, apart from having a separate bin, what is a very simple indicator for the safai wale karamchari to know that this is sanitary waste? Uh, Doc, would you like to just share? It's either the uh, red dot program or the red cross program. But uh, you know what tends to happen? We try, we find the most fancy uh, plastic packet and put our pads inside it. And then the power karmika doesn't know that is there something nice inside it or is there something stinky inside it? So we're not doing them a service. Plain newspaper wrapped and a red cross put on it or a red dot put on it is perfectly fine. But why must we go through that process? To me, start using the reusables from today. You must do it. Instead of you know trying to establish a system which will pick up the disposable sanitary pad. How did the Kodak film just go out of the country, out of the world one fine morning? Everybody bought the uh, digital camera and from the digital camera, everybody went into the uh, digital phone. Everybody has it. The poor Kodak chap just had to stop manufacturing because there was no demand. Let us make that happen here. The demand must go away and the supply will therefore die. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, uh, see, disposables are not going to disappear, but then we will have to make efforts in um, understanding what are the, I think there's, uh, once we start, uh, uh, I mean, this reason has been, uh, I'm going to rant a bit. So this reason is being given a lot of times that, you know, we don't have time to wash or we don't have time to, you know, manage something. We want very quick solutions. But uh, I mean, we do not uh, acknowledge those factors that uh, this quick solutions do have not so quick impacts. They have longer impacts and they are going to be there, be it a diaper or a disposable pad. They are going to be there on earth even if you die, your grand grandchildren die, they are still going to be there. And uh, so, I mean, what do we want to leave behind? What kind of legacy we want to leave behind? The legacy of disposables or the legacy of having a clean air, nice place, place where, you know, you can breathe freely, place where it's clean, hygienic. What do we want to leave behind? I think that is a question that we need to ask and uh, and this quick things i mean they may give a very instant gratification they may make you feel that you know your work has reduced but then has it really reduced it may have reduced your work but it has increased work of someone else who's going to manage your waste and many, many more yes absolutely and uh, it's going to be there i mean it's just going to be from years it's going to be going from facility to facility and you know there's it's just not going to end so uh, in that case i mean uh, uh, this this reason a lot of times is given to me that you know why rajasi why put burden only on women of saving the environment saving the earth why we should always do that and we will do this we will do that but i mean see i i feel our infrastructure 
lacks the understanding that there are multiple options available. Instead of talking of reusables alternatives, if we change our language that there are other products also available, there are products available. If we use these words, I think our mentality is going to shift from talking, uh, thinking of disposables as only mainstream products. And these are something, you know, otherworldly products. That's not true. The cloth existed even before we all existed. I mean, our grannies and even, even before that, they have been using cloth. We all wear cloth diapers as kids. So, I mean, it's, it's not something that has come from outside and it's not something very science, rocket science kind of thing. It's very simple. Just as we wash our clothes, it's, it's as simple as that. So I think very basic infrastructure, if we have to make it first is to acknowledge that there are going to be users using multiple products and put, uh, I mean, if we could put like, I think Green the Red did it uh, some years ago, very early, I think 2016, 17, where we put out posters or in various washrooms or about reusable products. I think that is one step that is I feel, but also I feel that when it comes to infrastructure, uh, I mean, uh, I do conduct sessions for these uh, engineers and different uh, workers. So uh, there I have seen that they are themselves not aware and they just know about one single product and they consider that this is only the hygienic option. No other products are hygienic. So I think that education is really important. And infrastructure, I mean, once we have understood what goes in, goes in uh, you know, in the menstrual basket once we understand that i mean uh, the solutions are going to come on their own and if we include like this this experiment that i tried many years ago in chhattisgarh was that talking to the uh, women in uh, collectorate office about reusables and we came to um, not reusables in but in general about menstruation and that is where I came to know that they did not have basic toilets. Like they used to, they had to use a toilet which was for guests. There was a, not a single toilet for women. So very simple things. I mean, we are so insensitive sometimes when it comes to menstruators. So if we start by really basic things, other things, and when you include, you know, all genders, things will automatically fall in the place. There, there will not be, you know, I'm hoping for a time where we don't, uh, we will need meetings for you know how to maintain a toilet or you know how to um, you know so like making things simpler but uh, right now what we're doing is we are allocating money without asking where the other person needs it or not so I feel that is a very big gap that we have right now we are not asking uh, the people what they want and we are just building something and then it's not getting maintained because the community did not demand it at, in the first place. So yes, I think all this is the elephant in the room which we do not want to address. Right, right. Doc, you did a program at uh, Siddipet and you sort of looked at an entire uh, gram panchayat or village that would shift. Oh to no, a you have no idea what uh, Dr. Yeah, Shanti so has share. done, done yes, in Siddipet. Please share. So yeah. they, they did it in a four phase uh, and the if there is one MLA that has transformed his assembly constituency, it is Minister Harish Rao. The, there is no disposable in the whole of the Siddipet district. Chai bhi, uh, you know, in, in the glass glasses milta hai. Uh, every, um, you know, unit, uh, the biscuit, the uh, dry fruit, the chai, Every water, everything is in reusables, and they have 43 wards in the in Siddipet, and all 43 wards have um, plate banks. So everywhere they are using only steel, and they don't have any problem with washing it. Yeah, that's that's the way it is, and of course they don't give any bouquets. And instead, if they have to give something, they give everybody a white towel that they will use. Whoever they are, you will use that towel um, in your home and forever remember uh, the person who gave it to you. So here, they first converted all the frontline workers, which was Asha, Anganwadi, the panchayat secretaries, the um, you know uh, people uh, who were in the administration, um, 
the uh, district commissioner was part of it. It's amazing what presentations he makes. And then, uh, of course, Harish Rao um, is the best, best thing that you know we came across. And he is so passionate about making it happen. He is willing to support even a lack of women with the menstrual cups. And now he says, people want to buy it themselves. They don't need us to support them to buy it because a cup saves you 90% of the money that you would be spending on disposables. So, you know- For everybody, for it's like for everybody, right? Right from the menstruator to the sanitary staff to the district administration to finding a solution for it. It's like a money saver for everyone. Yeah, they right? don't they don't have to clean up the drains anymore. So that that's the sort of uh, thing that has happened in Siddhi Pit. It's um, I, I'm we we are all hoping that you know it will like Indore is known for waste management. Siddhi Pit will be known for many things, including menstrual uh, management. Awesome, and I think I think that's a great uh, great takeaway, right? Like if you really really want to do it, you can do it. <laughs> there's, there's like uh, it's an effort of three years. And you know, every every month, uh, the multiplication factor is fantastic. And yesterday, Dr. Shanti was saying that if the 30,000 women who are not using disposable sanitary napkins, just imagine what they have saved in one year. 30,000 into 180 is the numbers that they have saved. Mm. Money for themselves, no garbage, cleanliness around, and most importantly, comfort for the women who are using the menstrual cup. I think that's the biggest take. Comfort is the biggest take. Though people will turn around and say anything else, use the menstrual cup and you forget you're having your periods. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So any closing thoughts, uh, both of you? No rash, no cash, no trash. That is what is reusables. It's like this line has not gone out of out of the punch at all. Like we've been using this for the last 10 years and the yellow was back on. <laughs> <laughs> Most everybody understands it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Rajasi, any uh, anything more to add to that? I I I just feel that uh, all of us, be we uh, may we be menstruators or non-menstruators, I think we just should be open to different things and uh, different perspectives. And I'm sure we can build menstrual-friendly uh, toilets, then schools, and then entire village or a city. So I feel if we just be open and if we include different people in the conversation, I think then we can definitely, uh, you know, uh, you know, be able to achieve this no rash, no cash, no trash situation. And, uh, and it's not difficult as it looks like. Yeah. So I, uh, what will our great grandchildren uh, find? It's like I was thinking. Mohanja Daro me jab we dug up, we had lots of beautiful vessels and everything else. When 500 years down the line, they look at what is it that these people used in the 20th and the 21st century, there will be sheets and sheets and sheets of plastic. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what they will get. So can you imagine instead of a beautiful Mohanja Daro and everything else that was in Mohanja Daro, we are going to gift our great great grandchildren sheets of dirty plastic and it's not it doesn't need to go there we are already getting microplastic in the sea salt and sea salt is the only salt that we have so we are going we are already getting microplastic one day we will be you know a stomach ko kaat ke nikala kisi takleef ke liye there will be whole lot of plastics that will come out like it's happening with the fish and the cows yeah so better yeah. take care yeah so i think i think that question of where does milk come from milk packets where does plastic come from our stomach i think that day is not very far away not far away so, at all yeah yeah not far away yeah thank okay. you so much both of you sorry for the technical trouble you would have really liked the audience but we got spammed uh, <laughs> massively no problem. and uh, 
Yeah, but arrived. this was such a great conversation. Yeah. You have arrived. Yeah. I hope the we have arrived. Yes. audience <laughs> liked our talking. Yeah, sure. yeah. And and if there are any questions that we get, we will reach out to you and we will definitely respond to them on on one minute, one minute. Please take please take a photograph. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, doc, print screen. It's <laughs> easier. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, both of you. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much for the Thank opportunity. You. Lovely yeah, meeting bye. you, Rajasi. Yeah, bye. Same here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Amrit. Bye. 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 Bye.